I like what um, Ambrose Redmond said, that courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is the judgment that what you want is more important than your fear. I used to be intimidated by people because they had more education, because they had more money, because they had credentials, because they had contacts, because they had four color brochures, because they had books and I didn't have all these things, because they had infomercials and they had television exposure and I didn't have all those things. But the judgment that providing for my family was more important than my feeling inferior, more important than my fears, the judgment that I have to control my future. The judgment that I want to be able to take care of my mother, that when my mother becomes ill, I want to be in a position to do more and just pray for her. Oh no, whatever she needs, medically, I will be able to write the check. The judgment that my children would have a choice to go to the college of their choice to give them a competitive edge in the future. The judgment that, oh no, one day I'm going to be able to have vacations. I will go to Paris. I'll go to Tahiti. I will go to Jamaica. I will go to Hawaii, the judgment, I have more time for myself, the judgment that I'm going to secure my grandchildren's future and my great-grandchildren, the judgment of those things that make life worth living was more important than my fear. What is it that will make it worth it for you to face the rejections? What is it that will make it worth it for you to brainstorm and not be intimidated and say, I can do this? What is it that will make it Worth it for you to raise the bar on yourself and say, I got some more stuff in me. Oh, I haven't even gotten my biggest deal yet. What is it that will make it worth it for you to go back to a customer who slammed a door in your face? What is it that will make it worth it for you to make know your vitamin that you become empowered by it? What is it that will make it for you when you want to give up? You can't buy a sale and things are working against you and you get close to making your numbers, and then they double your quota. What is it? You've got a sales manager breathing down your neck. Don't give you the tools. Don't give you the resources that you need. You're working in a toxic environment, and rather than working together, they're working against you. What is it that will make it worth it for you to get out of the car when you want to keep driving past the office because of the stress? What is it? That gives you the strength and the power. Got to sing on one of my tapes and life knocks you down. Try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. What is it that will help you get back up again? I'm going to show you how to be part of the notification gang. It's real simple. Click subscribe and then you click on this little bell here. Boom, bam, boom. That's it. And you get notifications as soon as the videos are up. Peace. Do it. Just. people go through life never getting in touch with their greatness because of the lack of motivation to push themselves or because they have not found something that they believe to be worthwhile to challenge them that many a talented persons have gone unnoticed and the world never had a chance to be exposed to their talent because that person did not take the time to begin to express or to demonstrate or to motivate themselves in the direction to bring that which they came into the universe to bring. Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know they were here. And in fact, under their name, we could put under there, not used up. Will anybody know that you came this way? What contribution are you giving? What will you leave? What will be different? because you came this way that life is our gift to us that God has given us and how we live our lives is our gift to God what kind of gift are you formulating is this a gift that you like to take back and do something else before you turn it in think about that what can we do what are some of the keys that we can begin to use to motivate ourselves when our batteries run low 
Because I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, at some time you are going to get tired. At some time you're going to get in a rut, seem like nothing you do works out right. And sometimes it just seems like you just don't have the wherewithal or the will to do anything. That sometimes you act like you're punch drunk. You're just wading through life, just doing time, day in and day out, looking at non-discriminatory television, anything that's on, just looking. And depressed, feeling powerless, feeling useless, and bored. What do you do? How do you get yourself out of a rut? How do you, when you know you can do more than what you've been doing and you're not doing it and you're discontent with where you are, you get angry at yourself. How do you get out of that rut? How do you motivate yourself? One of the things that we must do is that we must be involved in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can be anything but a dog. A tree can be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. So you want to work on yourself. You want to read books that inspire you and motivate you. You want to listen to tapes over and over and over again. And I suggest that you listen to tapes when you first get up in the morning. You want to control the spirit of your day. When you first wake up in the morning, your mind is operating at 10.5 wave cycles per second. That's when the subconscious mind is most impressionable. Whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes when you wake up, that will affect the spirit of your day. When you listen to tapes, listen with relaxed belief. Believing that this can happen for you. And by listening to them, listen to them over and over and over again. And you will get a breakthrough. You can listen to the same tape for months and all of a sudden you hear something you never heard before. It have a special meaning for you. Or read the same book over again and you find some special insight. You said, I can't believe I didn't see that the first time. So you want to be involved in developing yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people won't take that kind of effort and invest that kind of energy in themselves because they will fall prey to that conversation within. Oh, don't do that. You don't have time. You're too busy. You're too caught up in the rat race. Most people won't do that. Well, they won't take time to go to lectures. They won't take time to go to seminars. They won't take time to, to go to classes to improve themselves. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to expand your vision of yourself. You begin to work towards self-mastery and you will begin to see it reflect itself in all the dimensions of your life, your mental life, your physical life, your social life, in your relationships, your monetary life. So concentrate on developing yourself because if you don't, I guarantee you that you will make a settlement and most people have and most of us already have. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? Many of us are making in-life settlement. We're settling for less than what we actually deserve. We don't feel good about it, but we make it work in our minds. We'll come up with some kind of excuse to make it all right. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? Many of us settle for less than what we want out of relationships because we don't have the courage to change them. The next thing is, in order to begin to find some keys to self-motivation to drive yourself, in addition to working on yourself, and as you work on yourself, you feel good about yourself, and as you feel better about yourself, you treat yourself differently, develop a health plan. See, you can't feel well and do well if you don't have good health. You can't perform if you don't have your health. Your health is valuable. Develop a health plan. A plan that you will follow because this is the only vehicle that you have to carry you through this experience called life. And you want to take good care of it because you love you enough. You care enough about you. And that's not easy. It is not easy having a health plan and sticking to it. But you're worth it doing it again and again and again. Next thing is, as you take care of yourself, the next key is, keys to motivation, to self-motivation, you want to live life with energy. 
and passion. You want to make a conscious effort to be lively. See, in life, you either saying hello or goodbye. You either on the way or in the way. You want to be happy. You got a lot to be thankful for. But you watch some of the faces around you every day. And I tell you, some of these faces, they will put you in a depressed state of mind. So you want to avoid these kind of faces. When you see them coming, turn your head. The things that you say to yourself, you want to watch them. And in watching them, you want to take charge. So you've got to learn to stand up to yourself inside yourself. And short circuit, override that conversation that's always going on. 85% of what that conversation will tell you is negative. It's negative. It will tell you you're tired when you really are not tired. It will tell you you can't do it. It will fill you with fear. So you've got to watch that conversation. And when you find it going on, you've got to stand up to it and say, I'm going to do this anyhow. I'm afraid, but I'm afraid not to do it. And I'm not going to let you stop me. The biggest challenge that you will have in life is you. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. The next thing that is a key to self-motivation is that you've got to ask yourself, what do I want out of life? What do you want out of life? What do you want out of a job? What do you want out of a career? What do you want out of a relationship? What do you want? What gives you your life? What, how will you know when you got it? What will make you happy? You need to know, you need to start asking yourself some questions. What do I really, really, truly want? And you need to be exact about that. Don't be vague. Oh, I just want to be happy. That's too vague. What will make you happy? How will you know when you got it? Zero in on it. Be exact. Be specific. And as you do that, that will stimulate that superconscious mind or the reticular activating system of your mind that will begin to find those things, to identify with it. And once you begin to determine that which you want, take the time to write it down. Don't just think about it, write it down. That is a subjective process that engages the subconscious mind. Write it down. Once you write it down, read it three times a day, morning, noon and night. Why is that important? Because what it will do, it will cause you to focus. It will cause you to concentrate. When that other conversation is going on telling you what you cannot do, telling you all of the impossibilities and all of the obstacles, your concentrating will begin to create a larger vision within yourself and you start looking for and seeing some new opportunities. You start creating some openings for yourself. As you begin to read that every day, every day, day in and day out, that will make you focus. That will discipline your thinking. And you'll get all kind of creative ideas. As I talk to you right now, being involved in this immersion process, you're going to create some openings for yourself. You're going to get some ideas. You're going to feel your adrenaline flowing and you're going to think about something, some idea you had. You say, I want to go back and I'm going to look at that again from a different vantage point, not from the level of the problem of the obstacles that I encountered, but from a higher vantage point. Because what you will begin to see and to know as I talk to the higher consciousness within you, that you are powerful, that you are a miracle worker. And that inner conversation has conditioned you to believe that you are not. And as you begin to discover the truth of who you are, whatever challenge that you're facing in life, and if you're living, you're facing some challenge. You'll begin to know that you're powerful and that you're a miracle maker. But imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents, given to you by life and that you for whatever reason you never went after that dream 
You never acted on those ideas. You never used those talents. You never used those gifts. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you die today, what dreams, what ideas, what talents, what books, what music, what leadership, what voice will die with you? What if you live your whole life only to discover that it was wrong, that it was wrong, that you were chosen to do something else and you didn't do it. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself from the situation. Continue to move, stay busy, stay busy, stay busy. Find somebody that you can help so you can forget about you for a moment. See, sometimes the best thing to do is to be. Sometimes you have to just back up and go within yourself. A bow and arrow, you, you can't take a bow and just push it out an arrow. You just can't push the arrow out. You have to pull it back and then release it. Sometimes you have to back up and go within and pray and meditate and recharge your batteries. Go away, clear your head, and then come back and look at it from a different vantage point. Don't operate while you are under the spell or the effect of what's going on. Next thing is that you've got to activate the thinker in you. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. Your mind goes on automatic. You don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back. And I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. To yes, I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. The next thing that is important is that expect things to get better for you because they are. See, life is cyclic. You're not, what is, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass, not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass and maintaining perspective, putting it in perspective. See, a lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, a lot of us who begin to focus on problems and enable them to overwhelm us, we begin to think that we have no options. We begin to believe that there's no way out. There's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. See, I'm unstoppable. You've got to make those kind of declarations to yourself. I'm unstoppable. This will not get me down. And if I get knocked down, I'm going to be like um, Leo Pascal, you said you're going to have some low moments in life, but when you do, you will have high lows <laughs> when you work on yourself. What are some of those things that you can do during this period of time? Go for walks. 
Do some things for you. Just go for a stroll so you can engage in some reflective thinking on life, on yourself, looking and enjoying the universe, smelling the roses along the way. Because you're going to have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay there. At times you won't want to come out the house. At times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why. What's wrong? I don't know. It's necessary as you look at your goals and your dreams, it's necessary that you have a, a strategy and a game plan to change the story that you believe about yourself. And that's an ongoing process. I've discovered, and many people have, that what we do, what we accomplish, what we produce is a result of the story we believe about ourselves. My favorite book says, Be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so as I began to work on myself, I realized that I'm getting out of one story and stepping into another story. As I become aware of some things, there's still some things I'm not aware of. So I still, I'm still growing, I'm still developing. I'm like the lady who said, Lord, I ain't what I want to be, ain't what I'm going to be, but thank God I showed what I was. But I realized that, that you have to work on yourself on a regular basis, and write this down, for mental mindset. For mental mindset and stamina. Because things are going to happen to you. I don't believe, I believe that the reason that most people go to their graves with their talents and abilities and skills in them is because of the fact, number one, many are like me. They didn't know that they didn't know and, and thought they knew. I thought I knew myself and I really didn't know myself as well as I thought. I've discovered that sometimes people can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself. The other reason is I was afraid. I never worked for a major corporation. I wanted to speak for corporations. I was afraid I would, I would be exposed because I don't have a college education. I felt inferior because of the fact that I don't have a college education. I allowed that level of fear of failure to stop me. And because I never had any experience in it, I assumed that I could not do it. I was paralyzing myself by believing and assuming the limited part of myself as opposed to believing that I had something special. You have something special. There's something you want to do. Because you don't know how to do it doesn't mean that you can't learn. I, I like something that I heard. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. The other thing is take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Someone said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist, or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. There are two kinds of people in life. You know, he said, those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that don't know what happened. The people that get along in this life look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they make them. They create them. So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies, and changing your strategy means reinventing your life. Recreating you, and you have the power to do that. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. You can decide that I'm going to live each day as if it were my last. You, can, you have the power to make that decision. You can decide I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. And all of these things that are happening to me right now, they're just temporary inconveniences. They're not stronger than I am. I'm in charge here. They look at a man the way that he is, he only becomes worse. But look at him as if he were what he could be, then he becomes what he should be. Everything that you do, everything matters. As you go through each day, 
And one of the things that I can just tell you as you think about your goals and dreams, all of us can say in the spirit of integrity that it's possible. That if anybody at any point in time lived their dream, then it's possible that I can live mine. If there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. And so, as you look at your goals and dreams, every day we must convince ourselves, we must sell ourselves on that it's possible. See, the people that will live their dreams, the 2% that will do that, these are, and write this down, become a risk taker. They're risk takers. They don't mind failing. They don't mind making mistakes. They're willing to take life on, take life in the collar. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? here it will come where you are it's everywhere Viktor Frankl calls it unavoidable suffering you can't duck it but most people spend their life not wanting to deal with the pain of rejection the pain of defeat the pain of being disappointed the pain of losing the pain of failure the pain of being criticized the pain of not being liked the pain the pain the pain that's called life life is full of pain it's everywhere but guess what? There's no gain without pain. Because it's the pain of regret that you experience. If I had it to do over again, that's a pain. Don't you know that's something? When you know, I was in a seminar once and this lady stood up. If I had my life to live over again, she talked about all of the things that she would do. And you can feel the pain of regret in her voice. The pain of regret. She still experienced pain. She was trying not to experience the pain of defeat, the pain of disappointment, the pain of loss, the pain of lack of support. And she still experienced pain. It was right there. We can't get around it. Most people are governed by their habits, their fears, and the opinions of others. A lot of people never try anything differently because they have been convinced by people in their lives that they value that they can't do it. They're living within the context of the opinions that other people have of them. The low expectations. Many people doubt themselves because when they thought about doing something at some critical point in their lives, somebody they respected and honored, somebody they believed in, somebody that they loved, someone they trusted said you can't do that and they accepted that he says courage isn't for somebody else for medals applause or moral debts courage is what at that moment feels most right for you not just situational ethics but what feels right in your heart the word of the heart what feels right in your heart one great philosopher says, cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. What does that mean? The valiant people aren't afraid? No, no, no. It means that they experience that fear and they move forward. They move forward anyhow. Many people are dead now. Many people are allowing their dreams to die. Many people are allowing the ideas to lie dormant and collect dust. Many people have all this talent and ability that they are lying to be in, buried inside of them that they will take with them to their graves because they didn't have the courage to be who they are. And I say as you begin to look toward the future and manifesting your greatness, it's going to take everything in you, everything in you, that your life deserves the concentrated effort to begin to look at how is it that I can express more of me, 
How is it that I can bring my ideas out here now? How is it? And start living with a sense of urgency because you're here today. You're gone today. Life is unpredictable. It's uncertain. There are no guarantees. No guarantees out here at all. So holding back, what are you waiting on? Ask yourself, what's the benefit of your waiting? What's the benefit of your not living your dream? What's the benefit of not listening to yourself? Oh, please, listen to yourself. You know the feelings, if you start listening to the feelings in your heart, and I'm doing it now more every day, I find that my feelings, I can trust them. In what you've done with your life thus far, is it giving you what you want? Is it giving you what you want? When you look toward the future, when you look at all that's going on out here, is there some place within yourself you say, hey, I know I need to be out there in that arena. I know I can do more than what I've been doing. I know there's some great music that I have within me that I haven't brought out here yet. Is that something that you begin to look at within yourself? See, I say if you look at your life, and if, and if you're not getting what you want, you owe it to yourself to do something differently. You owe, if you own a job, 85%, they say, of Americans go to jobs, that they're unhappy. If you're doing something eight hours a day that you don't like, it's not giving you what you want, it's not giving you a strong feeling of satisfaction and fulfillment, you're miserable, you hate to go there, you're depressed just thinking about it, you're saying the thank God it's Friday song every week. If that's what it is, you owe it to yourself to start strategically working to change directions. See, but you know what most people will do? Most people will resist change. Most people will fight change as if change would be worse than what they're experiencing. See, they know this. They're familiar with this. Most people will not challenge the unknown. They won't just step out there. See, they, well, see, there are certain things that's got to be in place. They've got to see it all together. And life isn't like that. That's not how you grow. So as you look at your life, you're saying, I'm not getting what I want. As you begin to look toward the future, begin to know that whatever it takes for you to create that, you've got that in you. You got that. You've got genius in you. You've got goodness in you. You've got creativeness in you. If you decide to take the initiative to change the current quality of your life, I say to you that you will find that the universe is on your side, that life is on your side. Now, will it be turbulent? Yes. Will it be easy? No, no. Will you have some opposition? Yes. Will I make a lot of mistakes? Yes. Will I get hurt? Yes. Yes. See, a lot of people won't try anything different in life because they don't want to get hurt. Let me tell you something. It's too much pain to duck. As you look at your life, ask yourself the question, what would your life be like? What would your life look like if you decided not to care what people thought of you. What would your life be like if you decided to give up some of your fears? What would your life be like if you decided to become courageous? What would your life be like? If you decided to act on your dream, if you did what you felt in your heart, you know what courageous means? Tom Ruskin and Randy Reed said, they said that courage comes from a French word which means of the heart. But how does it feel to you? He says it's courage, you know, it takes courage to, to live. He says most people go through life not allowing themselves to step out because they don't want to let go. They don't want to be blown around. They don't want to be moved. The courage to face life's whirling wind of contradictions. The courage to love yourself. The courage to love. For years, I was afraid to love. The courage to take a chance. The courage to be who you are. And I say to you, that as you look toward the future, you look at life on a daily basis, 
if there's something that you have been given if you've heard something within yourself that you know that that what you're doing now doesn't fit for you it doesn't work for you it's not giving you what you want and there's something else that you want to do don't allow that inner doubt in you to talk you out of it to build a case on why you can't have it to tell you why you're not good enough you ignore that inner voice and all of the external voices don't judge the possibilities for what you can do based upon the circumstances because the circumstances won't determine who you are don't determine what you're able to do based upon your resources don't determine what's possible for you based upon where your life is right now where your life is right now is not you that's just what it is right now but the possibilities for you are unlimited if you're in a rebuilding process it's unlimited if you're coming back from adversity and devastation it's unlimited of what you can do that's the capacity of human beings it doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made it doesn't matter how many flops you've had it doesn't matter how much money you've lost in fact i see it only as an investment of what you learn from life not losses but investments of what's possible for you and i say to you that once you start listening to yourself and as you begin to act on your dream as you start just trying to find your way doing what you can with what you have you will start seeing things opening up for you you'll start attracting people you say where did they come from things will start coming together clicking for you you say whoa you start brainstorming ideas will come out of nowhere as you focus on it the key to it is to begin to focus on what it is you want to do. Why? Let's, why is that important? Because as you focus on that which you want to do, that which we focus on, that which we give our energy to, it will begin to multiply. It will begin to expand. It will begin to develop your consciousness. And out of that comes your greatness. Out of that comes a commitment. Out of that comes a passion for life. Out of that comes a special power that you have in you that you haven't even called on yet. See, the, the powers that we have will never reveal themselves if we don't challenge them. If we don't put ourselves in a position where we have to use them. So one of the most important things is reading a book that's a really interesting book called Instant Millionaire. And the guy said, put yourself in a position where you can't retreat, where it's do or die, sink or swim. Here's what you'll find out. You'll develop incredible swimming skills. You'll find yourself stroking unlike you've ever seen before. Through the inspiration of desperation, you'll become more creative than ever before. So what is it? How do we handle that whole piece? Throw your whole self into it. See, most people go at it tentatively. They don't give all their stuff. They don't concentrate. They don't put everything they've got in. One guy wrote a book called, All You Can Do Is All You Can Do. And all you can do is enough. But he said, make sure you do all you can do. And if we are honest this evening, we know that we haven't done all we can do. So as we look at the future, we can decide that from this day forward, as I look at my personal relationships, if I look at my professional relationships, if I look at my family relationships, if I look at all the dimensions of my life, looking at myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, I'm going to do all I can do to develop me to bring my talent out here, to make a contribution to life.